I think one of the most basic forms of cars is a saloon, but that doesn't mean they have to be boring or rubbish. In fact, super saloons are some of the coolest and fastest cars on the planet. How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. So we're going to look at 10 different super saloons that you can buy for under £20,000. All 10 of these cars come with almost supercar levels of performance in some cases and all of them come with a nice saloon body. Don't forget I'm in the UK so prices in other countries might be different and whenever you buy any second hand car, maintenance, repairs, insurance, road tax, all the good stuff is important to remember. If you like this video and want to see more like it, hit the like button, a thousand likes, and do the same video again at let's say under £10,000. Comment down below to let me know what your favourite super saloon of all time is. I'll let you know mine at the end of the video and subscribe as well if you're new here. Without further ado, let's get into the video. VRS celebrated its 20th anniversary in 2022 and the Skoda brand has produced some absolute bangers over the years under that name tag. The Octavia VRS Challenge in particular though is a bit of a beast with its 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 that produces 241 brake horsepower taking it from 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. Now weirdly the Octavia can actually be considered as a hatchback because of its boot but its shape is far more reminiscent of a four door saloon and in challenge spec it's in the most highly configured VRS spec you can get. This means of course the standard flary bits for the looks but it also has an LSD, Alcantara race seats, more aggressive alloys and more premium materials used on the interior. Owners have noted the handling is a very positive feature in these if a little bit more focused on being safe than sharp. That being said it's arguably the most practical car on the list too so it's reasonably quick, good looking and also can be used for day to day life. You can get an Octavia VRS relatively cheap but the 2019 challenge will run you around £20,000 at the bare minimum with around 50,000 miles on the clock. It's a very reliable car too with the DSG automatic gearbox being the main thing to maintain well for now but do remember it's very new so problems may be further down the line. Like VRS, VXR is Vauxhall's sporty badge here in the UK at least while in Europe it's known as OPC. Wherever you are the VXR8 is a proper super saloon for the money with its 6.2 litre V8 LS3 which produces 424 brake horsepower which gets from 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds. The car was built to rival the BMW M5 and Mercedes E63 AMG and though it's actually inspired by the Australian V8 supercars given its original badge is a Holden one, it's actually descendant of another super saloon, the Vauxhall Lotus Carlton which is already a cult classic. If you went for a slightly older model you'd get the 6 litre LS2 instead and it was only at the end of 2008 when the LS3 took over. It's worth mentioning that the car is super rare in the UK with just 177 left on the road so it's pretty exotic too if the very aggressive stylings and wing didn't tell you that already. £12,000 minimum you'll find them listed for and for £20,000 you get a 2009 model with around 70,000 miles on it. That LS3 is known to be very reliable and doesn't get too much hassle sitting in the VXR8. The body is good too but owners do complain about the cheap interior and some general build quality failures. It's one of my personal favourites coming in at number 8, the Subaru Impreza WRX STI which hosts a highly fragile 2.5 litre turbocharged boxer 4 that produces 270 76 brake horsepower which helps it get from 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds. Let's start with the reliability, I would probably recommend going for an older model with the 2 litre block as the 2.5 litre is known for head gasket failure and head warp which is basically time for a new engine. Rust is also known plus everyone seems to enjoy modifying these cars so finding one that hasn't been played with can be difficult. But still you buy into a car with incredible rallying heritage, I personally adore the Impreza given it was the car I was brought up watching people like Colin McRae Richard Burns and Peter Solberg bashing around forests in and the WRX STI is the next best thing for the roads. Plus in STI spec everything is upgraded like the suspension, the Brembo brakes, the aesthetics, all of it and I think in future you'll see these as classics especially as they're on their way up in price right now. These start at around the 10k mark while for 20k we'll be looking at 2007 example with 60k on it. The 6th generation Maserati Quattroporte dropped back in 2013 with a new sleeker shape and a 3 to twin turbocharged V6 engine that makes 404 brake horsepower in S spec which means it will do 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds. Compared with the previous generation the 6th gen got a longer wheelbase and a different platform entirely which was shared with the Ghibli. It's sadly not a Pininfarina design but it was designed by a former from Pininfarina and is arguably the most luxurious car on the list at least in terms of spec options. But just because it's a luxury car it doesn't mean it's not quick and though the S model is by no means the punchiest it's not bad at all. Though sadly in 
the UK, we never got access to the slightly quicker all-wheel drive examples. £15,000 the lowest that I could find one listed for, and for 20 k you'll get an S model with around 70,000 miles on the clock. There have been a few recalls on these over the years, but outside of maintenance costs, owners haven't been too critical. There have been complaints though about the interiors feeling too cheap for a car in the luxury class, but that's up to you to opine on. Taking sixth on the list is the Jaguar XJ, which in some specs, like Super Sports, has a 5 litre supercharged V8 that makes 502 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds. It's another luxury car and it's absolutely massive. It looks nothing like a car that should be doing sub 5 seconds to 60, but it definitely sounds like it should. The interior on these is really comfortable and quite good looking too, and I love the massive center console with the analog clock in the dash, plus the extra luxuries like the heated and cooled seats and wafty suspension setup. This whole generation was a big shift from the former design. Not only was it a huge step up in performance and luxury, it looks entirely different, with a whole new design language thanks to Ian Callum taking over design responsibilities, and I'm glad he did. As so the previous gen does look good in its own right, I think cars like this XJ have helped to cement the modern visuals of the Jag brand. £18,000 around the lure you'll get a 502 brake horsepower model for, and for 20k we'll be looking at a 2011 example with 60,000 miles on it. Electrical issues are known, but outside of that, the main problem owners complain about on forums is fuel economy. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As a reminder, if you are and you want to see it under £10,000 instead, hit the like button, I'll do the same video again under £10,000 instead. And if you're not already, do go follow me on Instagram, at carswithjb. I'm trying to post more often over there, so get involved and I will see you in, in on Instagram, I guess. I love the Audi RS4, and even though most people think of them in a state spec, they do also come as a saloon. And the B7 is an absolute beaut, with its 42 to V8 engine that makes 414 brake horsepower and does 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. It also comes as a convertible, which is probably my personal favourite spec with the roof down, but I think the saloon also does a very nice job and shouldn't be ignored just because everyone wants an event. It's actually rapid for the money, almost beating the 8 minute mark at the famous Nürburgring, and it looks aggressive too, maintaining a bit of a sleeper status given it's a little bit if you know, you know, but if you do know, you'll recognise the wider wheel arches, the larger alloys, the bigger brakes, and the lower suspension as well as the additional intakes on the body kit and realize this car is no joke. Inside it's also quite nice with those large comfortable sports seats that are customary inside RS Audis. I mentioned it in a recent video and inaccurately mentioned that it's available at under £10,000 when in reality these generally start at around £13,000 and £20,000 is where you'll find a nice 2007 model that's done around 60,000 miles so apologies for that, one just happened to be available for under 10 k The engine is solid in these but watch for coil pack failure and carbon build up. A rogue one for sure, but it can't be missed from the list. The Lexus ISF has a massive 5 litre V8 that makes 417 brake horsepower and will go from 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. Yukihiko Yaguchi, the man who helped design the Mark 1, 2, 3, and 4 Supras, was the chief designer on the ISF, which caused a bit of a media ruckus in the years leading up to its release, as it was often seen testing at the Nurburgring in camouflage livery. They released the car to the world in 2007 alongside the LFA concept and is a perfect purpose-built super saloon with a bulkier engine bay to fit that V8, wider wheel arches and a lower overall body with wider track for better handling and aero, and that awkward quad exit exhaust setup, although in reality they're actually fake which is a bit dead. The engine was built alongside Yamaha's Formula 1 engine program and of course it has a paddle shift setup that's quite supercar-esque. This is a proper super saloon. This is an expensive car still though, and £20,000 around the minimum you'll find them listed for, with around 100,000 miles on the clock. It's generally reliable and the engine is good for more power, but watch for the leaking heat transfer plate and ensure fluids are topped up on schedule. Onto the top three now, and in third we have the Mercedes CLA 45 AMG, the four-door coupe style saloon version of the hot hatch A45 AMG. It has a two litre turbocharged inline four that produces 350 54 brake horsepower and gets from 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. We can argue over it being a saloon given the coupe like sloping roofline but the saloon style four doors but we can't argue over that performance plus the fact that in general these have been relatively reliable with main problems being build quality related or complaints around the automatic gearbox being jerky in slow moving traffic. The interior on these look amazing in my opinion but I agree with owners that the materials used are a bit underwhelming and if I'm being harsh, cheap in all 
all the wrong places. Outside of that though, I think aesthetically both inside and out, it's a stunning car and one that definitely turns heads. I will say the one negative is that when new, these were more expensive than the A45 AMG and they remain slightly more expensive now. Unless you really don't like hot hatches, I don't know why you choose a CLA over the A as they're effectively the same thing. £18,000 is around the minimum you'll find them listed for and £20,000 to get a 2014 model with 60,000 miles on it. Taking second on the list is not the E60 M5, that was in my last video on this topic. Instead, it's the following generation, the F10, which is a 4.4 litre twin turbocharged V8 that makes 552 brake horsepower more than any other car on this list, taking it to 60 in 4.2 seconds. One thing I'll never understand is why only the US got the manual gearboxes in these, as in the UK and Europe we got the DCT Auto as our only option. But either way, it is rapid, with a 7 minute 55 second lap time around the ring, putting it on par with the track ready Caterham R500 Super Light. If optioned correctly, you'd get 6 piston calipers with carbon ceramic brakes and an active diff to keep the power effectively hitting the road. The only potential negative about the M5 is that it's a bit too slippery for my personal taste, as it's not that dissimilar to the standard 5 series, as the body is slightly more flared but only just, and it's of course nowhere near as iconic as the E60 with that V10, but it doesn't take away from how quick this car still is. These start at around £18,000 and 20 k will get a 2012 model with 80,000 miles on it. There are known issues on these, but most of those problems are on pre-2012 examples, so try to get a newer one for better potential reliability. Taking the top spot is the Mitsubishi Evo 10, specifically in GSFQ360 spec, meaning it has a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 that makes 354 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in just 4 seconds. This is the final generation Evo, which is a shame as Evo remains one of the most iconic badges in the automotive world, and I'm always happy to get both the Evo and Impreza into the same video. What team are you on by the way? Let me know in the comments down below. I have a distinct appreciation for both and I know that's a bit of a cop out but whatever. My favourite of the bunch is the 22B so if that tells you anything, great. Anyway, back to the Evo 10, although I'm not going to lie, I'm happy to ramble about other stuff as it is my least favourite generation. It's a lovely car, looks great and updated the Evo into the modern era but it has no rallying pedigree and that has basically had an impact on its overall popularity given many owners complained that it feels too much like a sports car and too little like a rally car. These start at £20,000 but there are usually a few available at that price with around 50,000 miles on the clock. Well maintained examples should just keep on going but be aware that people like to modify these so finding an untouched model will be tough. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you've let me know in the comments down below as well what your personal favourite super saloon is. It's a very difficult choice for me but I quite like the Jaguar XFRS. I just think it's quite different and special and I'd love to have one. Massive thanks to the patrons as always for their support and to you guys as well for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Yes.